Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to do an unboxing of this Fleur 1 thermal imaging camera and uh, I think we should do it quick and just move on to the table and do the unboxing and maybe play around with this a little bit. Here is the box and I want to give a thank you to YouTuber Rhinoa Super Genius. She helped me smuggle this out of the United States because I bought it on Amazon but they didn't want to ship it to Denmark. So here is the box and let's just see it. That's the front side of it, Fleur 1, thermal camera, blah 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 blah. And this is the iPhone version. It will work on iPhones and on iPad and only um, the connections with the new little connections. I do not know if you can convert it to the old connection, but that's how it is. It has a pin number, serial number, has some tiny text down there, but well, it says here that it will work on or made for iPhone 6 plus, iPhone 6, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5, iPad Air 2, iPad Mini 3, iPad Air 3, iPad Mini 2, iPad Mini, iPad 4th generation. Okay, that's probably all the devices that has that little connection. Um, so that's fine. The back side has some nice images and some, some crap here. Ah, that's, that doesn't look that well. A piece of tape or something that has been on here. Too bad. And they brag a little bit here. See the heat? Fleur 1 extends the limits of the human eye by translating invisible thermal energy into dynamic color images. So that's cool. And they have some examples and house. Where is it warm? Where is it cold? And a pipe and a, I think that's a, might be mm, a fuse box or something like that. And a, a guy that is drinking a cold beer and well, that's cool. So let's get this out of there. I haven't had this open at all. I have had it for a few days, but I've actually been waiting to uh, to make this unboxing. So this is a real unboxing for me at least. Uh, I don't think anyone has had this out. I hope so it slides out like that. Very nice. And there is another box and there is it's sealed. So, so that's probably good. Mm -hmm. and it seems like the box go comes apart. So I think I'll try and see if I can remove this piece of tape. Be careful. Got it. That seems to go fairly good. So we'll put that somewhere safe, like on the back. Cool. So now I should be able to slide this open. There. And apparently that's how the Fleur 1 is shipped. And there is the device itself is right here. Mm, there is some weird dust particles on it from the packaging. So I'll try and put that there and here is a case for it. Move it around, you can put it in this. It's kind of a rubbery material. Now you can't feel this on, on camera, but you can see that I can move it and it has a nice rubbery feeling to it. So this is some kind of a rubber and there is a, a mounting bracket here so that you could, uh, there's probably a string for it down here under the box. So, awesome. Let's see what else is in the box. This comes up. Hope there's a charging cable. There. We have a charging cable. And we have the string to secure it to something else. Awesome. And we have a little bit of paperwork down here. There is even a little bit of text in the bottom of the case. Oh, that's kind of says the same thing as on the bottom. Made for iPad, made for iPhones, made for iPad. Mm, iPod, oh, sorry. Made for iPod and made for iPhones and made for iPad. I might have said that wrong from the text on the back. 
doesn't look that important. I rather want to play with this. There is a thank you for buying the Fleur thing. There is even an email address if you want to give some feedback. Nice. And registrate your Fleur 1 online. And there's a QR code. Okay, I might go do that. A quick start on Vorangy. Okay, I played with this last year, so I kind of know how it works. I might find out some new stuff, you never know. Let's uh, let's have this out of the bag as well. See how the quality is. So it's it's just a string. So this is feels like it's nylon. Okay, easier said than done. I'll I'll do that later apparently. So wait with that. Um, the Fleur one has its own battery pack inside, and the battery time of it is it's not fantastic. You have to charge it fairly often, uh, and for that you use this cable, charging cable, and that should this is a USB A connection to a USB. B connection or a micro USB on the device we have a charging port here and a charging LED here on the other side there is a on off button we can just try and press that see there is a bit of power on it wonder if I can turn it off again yeah it turns off again let's charge this over here I have my little charging station and right now my phone is charging, so uh, that's almost completed, so I'll let that charge. And I'm using a Chinese port charging device that can take three plugs. I have a device that can measure how much power a device uses, so I think we will use that. Uh, I've been charging the camera as well, so we'll have this cable that came with it. Unwrap that, connect that. Uh, reset this there. Number five is available. Uh, right now it's supplying 5.26 volts. So we'll plug in the cable and we'll take the flare here. Um, and this should kind of show us how much power this draws. And we will also be able to see when it's done charging because then it will stop drawing power. So I'm gonna connect that. Um, okay, I'll do it the right way then. There. Here is the voltage and here is the amount of amps that it's drawing. So it's charging with about half an amp. And down here is the number of milliamp hours that has been put into the device. So we might be able to measure out how much power the device actually is able to store by seeing how much went into it. But we will let it charge until it stops. And we could just see that it's blinking here now. So that probably means that it's charging. It's gonna be interesting to see if this is solid green when it's fully charged or if it just goes out again. Right now it's charged. So apparently it lights up to be all the time green when it's done. I haven't filmed this right away. I did see that it was fully charged and it had put about 100 milliamp hours uh, onto the battery in here. But since then, apparently it's, it's using power to light this up and it's trying all the time to see if it can stuff some more power on there. So this has raised up to uh, 127 milliamp hours. So it's probably not a good idea to leave this on here. It will consume some power. So uh, let's uh, try and put this on my phone and uh, see it working. I got this on here now, so that's how that works. So put that away. I have my phone here and I usually have, I have this rubbery material to protect my phone. So far it has been working, I've never broken it. I have had the batteries changed on my phone, but that was something completely different. The Fleur connects to the iPhone through the charging port and data port down here. And you can put it, you can you can turn it both ways. 
Well, it's of course smartest to have it pointing backwards because you can then use it uh, like that. You can have your screen on there and see what it's filming. So we're gonna try and turn this on. Punched in my password. And the software you need to download, I have here, I have the Flow 1 software and I have some Flow tools. And I really can't remember which is the, is the good software and which is not needed. But let's just start by powering this on. There we are, it's on. And let's just start the, oops, the Flow 1. Oh. Flow one would like to communicate. Uh, that's probably a good idea to uh, allow that. Oh, and it started all by itself. Okay, and it would like to access my location. If you're really paranoid, you should probably say no to that. I'm not that paranoid. This seems to be hot and somehow it's warmer than the table. You see the table is 24 degrees Celsius and this piece of plastic is 25 degrees and if I let's just put my finger oh my finger is hot so we'll just put my finger on it for a little bit I'm hot and there is a finger mark on the plastic where I touched it let's see that's the Fleur software Let's see which one we have here. Oh, get my fingers out of the way. Let's try the tools and see. Flow tool. I have no idea what that is. Email, password. Ah. Apparently you can you can connect to Flow through their page. Let's not do that. So let's go back to the Flow one, which was the one that we were just at and see what's going on i think we will have a little walk around the house and see what so let's take a walk here is the wood stove it's very hot what does it say 120 degrees so that is doing very well it's not that hot around it. Oh, it has a little bit problem updating here. Oh. Looks very cool. Let's see behind the wood stove. Do we have a heating problem down here? Nah, about 50 degrees. Apparently. Funny thing, I have a shadow. Oh, I can see this. Sh the camera light uh, has uh, is making a shadow of the floor one on the wall behind there. So this is a piece of the wall, and there are some cold spots. If you see this, 24 degrees. And another one down here. I'm pretty sure that that's the long screws that I've put into the wall to fasten the... There is like these plates that are down here. They are mounted to the wall and you can see where they are mounted because they're sticking through into the wall on the cold, on the cold side here. Um, let's see if there's any more of them. Yeah, another one. Two more there, and over here, I have a really cold spot. I knew about this one. Uh, it's an outlet, and I, uh, I forgot to insulate that. So in between, there's another outlet on the outside. So the cold air is coming in from the winter garden through the plug, which is really weird. So, well, I have to fix that at some point need to um, insulate between those two plugs. Here is another nail. There are some. So 
Uh, made some cool spots when I've mounted all of this because the nails are sticking in so far. Hmm. Uh, I heard that the the corners will look really cold, but that's apparently some kind of a reflection effect. Might try and go very much closer and see if it disappears. Transformer from for my lamp on the floor and that's very hot. And over here we have yeah, it's a little bit cold here along the edge. Probably cold air coming up from the floor. That's probably right. It's not very well insulated down there. So yeah, it works. And it looks pretty cool actually. The wind oh and the window frame here. There's a reflection, that's me. The heat is being reflected in the window. Oh that, that can tease a little bit. I found something rather interesting. Here on the table I have a cloth that I've used to dry off the dust of this uh, before I started filming. And I kind of just pointed the thermal camera at it. Uh, okay, I've been playing with the... There is different color schemes here. So we have to go back to the iron one. And you can see it's a couple of degrees lower than everything else. Actually quite a bit. Almost six degrees lower. That's because it's a little bit wet and the water is evaporating from that cloth. The energy needed to evaporate that water cools down the cloth. So let's look at, at some of the stuff you can do in this program. First we have some pictures. You can take pictures and it will store all the pictures here. These are actually some that I took last year. Only taken one this year or today. That one. You can take pictures. Right now it's set for video, so if we press there, it will be recording a video of what I'm doing here. Let's stop that. And then there is photo, panorama. Oh, to do that, apparently you need to turn it this way. And you can take a picture and you can take one more and one more and you, and you can kind of make a 360 degrees picture around yourself. I don't know if it's a full 360 degrees, but it's probably close. Then there is time lab, and we can probably can try and set that. You get a lot of options here. Delay, frame interval, frames per second. I haven't played with this at all, so let's go back to video. That's probably the one I'm gonna be using most. Then there is different color schemes down here. Uh, there's nine of them, as far as I can see. Different ways for the fleur to interpret the temperatures and make it into colors. And some of them looks really weird. They might be usable for something. I kind of just like the one that it uh, started out with, which looks a lot like the one we're used to. Up at the top menu up here, there is like three buttons. First one is, a, I think it's a calibrating button. It will calibrate the camera. And when it does that, it pauses for a little bit. You can probably see that if I, if I move the camera and press it, it will stop and calibrate and then I can move again. Then there is the temperature down here, um, and I can remove that by checking that box, and it will not measure the temperature anymore. And then there is a settings where I can turn on the lights, I can 
turn on a timer if I want to take a picture of myself I could use that one and then there is lock span it presents the colors from light white to black depending on the highest and the lowest temperature and if, if I move in somewhere where it's really hot it uh, makes a new adjustment and if I don't want that I can use that button and it will stay on that then there is settings and there is settings that we can set in here for example the auto calibration if I was gonna make an important film I would probably shortly turn it off then I would have a more smoothly film instead of having it calibrate in the middle of everything you can change the units Fahrenheit Celsius it can save the locations save to photos blah 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 help and about floor so not anymore in there and then up here there's battery meter right now it's lighting up it's actually complaining that now it's 23 percent battery life yet um these screens become really dirty really fast i think we'll clean that i have been playing with it for uh, the better part of an hour and this is the battery life of the floor up here um, showing me that now it dropped down to 21 percent battery so um, well, I would estimate a good hour and a half playtime with this before the battery has to be charged again. It is brand new out of the box. I don't know if the battery becomes worth over time. Well, that's the Fleur 1 and you can do funny stuff like this, like having it pointed me, which is always a lot of fun. I am very amused. The Fleur is available in your favorite internet shop i'll of course link to it down in the description if you want to play with this it's also available for android but i hear really bad things about the android version there's a lot of compatibility issues you have to get the right android telephone it's a lot more easier for the iphones thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye